come on in. Mm -hmm. like, so cozy yes, come forward. Yes. So you can see in here. <laughs> um, yeah, so the history of, of Neil and I, we actually, the first time we met, uh, I visited your office in the Flatiron. That's right. And I was in, this is going to make me sound like a, a real lush, but I was, <laughs> I, it was, we had been celebrating because I was there for uh, New York Times Best Illustrated, the first, no, second one that I received for White Cat of the Month. And uh, it was the <clears throat> pouring rain. It seems like every time I'm here, I mean, it's an honor to have received this for the fourth time, but every time there's something that really balances the, the <laughs> scales of, of uh, you know, just hum humbling me and at the same time as honoring me. So that year was uh, just a, a torrential downpour and I had a fight with my author right before going into this <laughs> awards. It was just so, yeah. Uh, but that was the first day that we, we met and yeah. it, was, uh, it, was, it was great. And, and from then on we had these small little meetings <laughs> when we were at the same events and the same functions and uh, it very quickly learned that we had a, a very similar vision. Or, or at least I had a connection with him, which is a very important thing for me. I have a really hard time working with people that I don't have a connection with because I need to feel trusted. I need to feel like um, that there's there's a there's someone that I need to go above and beyond for. There uh, is someone that I need to climb mountains for. And uh, and the sublime, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but the part part of the reason why I mention this is because this book, dedicated to Sheila Berry, who uh, was the editor for those first three books that received uh, the uh, the uh, New York Times Best Illustrated, and uh, and that was the first time that I realized that was. That was how I got the best work out of myself. That's how anybody got the best work out of me, was for, for us to have this connection that was deeper than just uh, editor and creator. Um, and uh, so two years ago on Friday, she passed away. I was actually here in New York for Town is by the Sea and sending her photos saying, oh, I wish you were here. Uh, so that was really depressing. Um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but she knew at that point that my intention was to work with Neil. And uh, although it felt like a slight, like I was letting her down, she made sure uh, that uh, that wasn't the case. That she, she gave me her blessing through, through Barb Housen, who is the rights manager and background manager gave her blessing and said it was the right thing to do and um, the smart thing to do. And uh, we, none of us knew what was gonna happen, but um, I think, I, I firmly believe that it is, was the right thing to do. And, uh, um, and here we are, we're in this, this place, this family here that I'm, I'm I'm new to, but already feel like I'm really a part of and really invested in. Um, and it was really important to me that Neil was also starting off new. I moved around a lot when I was a kid. I, when I was a kid, I went to nine different schools. And every year I got into this habit of reinventing myself. It was a good opportunity to, to be, you know, the version that I wanted to be. And, and, uh, doesn't always happen. <laughs> you always end up slipping back to your usual self. But sometimes uh, it's just a good excuse to, to get rid of, uh, you know, to wipe the slate clean. And this is an, a, the perfect opportunity for me to have wiped the slate clean. I'm starting new with my own written book. I'm partnering with this man who is, who is also starting fresh and um, I felt like we were sort of in tandem in many ways. Although, I mean, you have built up such a career and I'm just sort of like getting going. But. Just all. Yeah. 
but uh, Neil doesn't really give himself enough credit for the for the development of, of this book because because uh, when I first went to him, it was really just kind of ephemeral. Kind of, I was really talking to him about a feeling, and the feeling was being alone in the busyness of a city. And, and, and at first, it was more about I don't know. I think I had to sort of discover the subtext before I actually realized that I needed something else. And it was this meeting in um, Boston that Neil listened and very patiently. I was just firing off all these different things, what I was thinking of, and he just, uh, we hadn't even committed to working together, but he just said, well, why don't you, why don't you add a dog or something? And I thought, oh, oh no. That's what I always say. I thought, oh. <laughs> I'm not really a dog person, but, but then a little bit later, I had uh, realized that that was exactly what I needed. I needed, I needed, a surface, I needed a surface layer of a story, an armature of a story for me to place all of this subtext upon. And then uh, it all kind of fell together. It all came together. And oh, I'll take credit for that, the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the best, that's the best thing about collaboration is that you're throwing these things that you would never really come up with yourself. And although I love writing with me, <laughs> uh, there's something to be said with, for working with other people because you come up, you end up with these, these. Uh, the results are something that you could that uh, only only occur when uh, you're problem solving and um, improvising with the content that other people have provided. Like for example, is it? Should I mention that? Absolutely. No? Yeah. So the next book that we have worked on and is done. I think, <laughs> um, is with a poet from the west coast of Canada. His name's Jordan Scott. And uh, it's, you want, want to describe it? I, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it because it's, what, it's a book that Sydney didn't write. Um, uh, Hail Canada. Hail Canada. <laughs> yeah. uh, because a Canadian agent sent me a text by Jordan Scott. He's ever written a children's book before. He's a poet. And he, he also has had a severe stuttering issue since he was a child. And uh, he wrote a book which, uh, whose working title was uh, How I Speak. And it was from the perspective of a small boy talking about the difficulty of stuttering and how he felt. And it was unlike anything that I had come across in recent years. Um, and I've gotten to the point where I only want to do a book uh, if I can't live without it, if I knew I couldn't live without this book. And it was n it not a big leap to, uh, to get from Jordan to Sydney and say Sydney's the only guy uh, who could possibly illustrate this book. And uh, the Canadian, what the hell, <laughs> in an all Canadian project. And it took a little bit of arm twisting. Uh, well, because I had already, I had already said that I'm just working by myself. At right. That point. I was like, no more. <laughs> but again, we said okay. We we were gonna we were gonna do this book, and Emily was very gracious in allowing us to proceed. And uh, and this is the case where there was much more pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. I think in our working process, right? From yeah. scratch with something that hadn't existed before. My working with Jordan. Uh, whom I still haven't met. Sydney has met Jordan. Yeah, he's a, uh, an amazing guy. Yeah. And, and there are videos uh, on YouTube that show him performing because uh, he's a bit of a performance artist as well as a poet. Um, and a lot of his work has to do with with uh, stuttering. Mm -hmm. um, and we made this book, which we decided to take a instead of calling it "How I Speak," we said we. I don't want to call it that. We mm -hmm. took a line from the text, and it's called "I Talk Like a River," because a river is a central metaphor in this book. I don't know that we want to show the whole book, uh, but I thought we could do a little bit just to maybe show them the jacket. And, and these are really bad Xeroxes. Oh yeah, this so is this is Jennifer Brown, uh, my designer of twenty. Six five, years, six. five, six years, something like that. 
Um, she's responsible for the look of all the books I do, to a very large degree. Um, How do you feel about us showing this right now? Good, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody the to see this. Process. I mean, you can't really see. Oh, there's the there's the tape in the center, but there's yeah. there's the. Yeah. Camera, there's the but the thing that I love about this book is Sydney's extraordinary ability to show light and light hitting water. And there's a lot of water in this book. Um, and uh, in my first gatefold. His first gatefold. <laughs> so that's again horrible printing quality. Um, but that would give you a taste of what's coming out. The interesting thing about this book is it's a very contemplative book. It's in this boy's voice. It talks about his experience both in school where he can't communicate and, uh, and about a, a, a trip to the river that he takes with his father. And his father uses the, met the river as a metaphor for how he speaks. And you, to me, what folds into this it is a tight close-up close of the boy's face. Um, and then you literally open it up to see what's going on in his mind. And, uh, and you get this magnificent panel of the river. Um, this is not going to do it justice, but that's kind of... So that's what you see, and then you open up and you get the river. And my mm -hmm. father says, I talk like a river. Um, I am so proud of that book, as I am a small in the city. And I was saying to Sydney last night, it's so frustrating. We have to wait almost a year yeah. <laughs> to see it in its final form. But, uh, but it's, yeah, like it's great to hold on to a secret like that. It is. Yeah, yeah. You, you are privy to a deep, dark secret. Yeah, it's a secret. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but again, like, this is, this is a good uh, example of, of why it's so good, for, why I feel it's so rewarding to collaborate is because I would never be able to tell a story like this. And it's only through the collaboration that I am able to like partly represent the story and empathize with the author, which is it's such a it's such a uh, a moving um, manuscript, yeah. and a lot of room to uh, explore uh, what it's like. Because I mean, it, it it's very specific. It's spe specific about his. Um, is stuttering, but it's also really kind of talks to a more universal. Everyone has this feeling of, of, of not really being in sync with their body, or feeling this anxiety, or or uh, I think it, there's a lot there's a lot of universe, uh, universality there. Derek and I were talking about how best to present this book because it isn't just a book with for kids who either have an issue with stuttering or have friends who do or their parents or anything. It's a book for anyone mm -hmm. who feels kind of alone and apart from what you do when you feel that way. And I think we can all identify with that at one point in our lives or another. So I won't, uh, I think that's pretty much all we want to say about the book at this point, <laughs> except wait for it. <laughs> and let's all have some cake. Yeah. Yeah.